here and here from Tabletop Warfare. Just getting a bit of the old painting on tonight. Um, welcome if you've never been before. Um, doesn't look like there's anybody in the chat yet, but there shall be eventually. It tends to be on a Monday night. Uh, so tonight I'm gonna be painting some um, <clears throat> E-Web Heavy Blaster Team unit from Star Wars Legion. Um, I have. I'll do a little chat about um, the Vallejo base spray paints. I had some experience with that tonight, so I just want to share my experience. Um, show off the little uh, Army Painter hand drill that I bought during this week. Uh, and then we'll also build up um, some... Stormtroopers for Star Wars Legion, a unit, and also an upgrade as well for the Stormtroopers as well. So the main difference here is that the Stormtrooper expansion has the seven basic units in it. Um, so we've got just four normal dudes with blasters. Uh, then we've got a guy with a rocket launcher and a guy with a, a heavier cannon. Uh, and then the commander of that unit or the leader of that unit. And then the upgrade kit has what looks like a you know there's four more units there with some heavier weapons to them basically um, and my understanding is they can either be run as their own unit uh, or they can enhance your other units that you've already put together and put on the table so already needing to adjust some camera settings just to make things more clear there we go so yay oh there we go so some nice some nice little expansionaries there. Give you another look at those bad boys. So yes, uh, and they are going to go along with the boys that I have been painting last week off camera. Let's give you a bit of a look at these bad boys here. So I've done basically two troops already. Let's see how close I can get this camera down on these bad boys so you can check them out. Come on, camera, be good to me. There you go. So if I shuffle these boys around so you can see what's going on. So this is one of my squads. So did these guys up they've got their basing done and everything just some really basic bases done with a bit of um agar uh, what's this stuff called um so armageddon dust for the texture paint on those bases and then a bit of agro agro dunes to shade them and then just some nice little arid tufts and some brown tufts from lead bear um, and as you can maybe make out I've got some uh, 
I've, I've marked these guys up as a squad by putting a green stripe across the crown of their helmets. I don't know if this is standard, but it's the way I've decided to go with these guys. Just to, because my understanding is that they, I can make up to six or seven in this unit by adding some special weapons. Uh, and then this is my other squad. So these all came from a core box set. Um, I was lucky enough to do a deal with one of our regular Star Wars guys from the store who um, is building up some Rebel Partisans. Um, by that we mean some of the more roguish type elements of the Rebels. Say your saws, renegades and that sort of thing. Uh, and this is my blue squad, so the, the rebreather on their mask is blue and their pauldrons are blue. Um, so that is essentially what we get out of the Stormtrooper unit box. So that's that, basically. I'm going to build these up a little bit later tonight. Um... In the meanwhile, so that's that's what I've been up to this week. In addition, or this weekend just gone, uh, and then in addition to that, get back in my container. Uh, I started on this eWeb heavy blaster unit. That logo is really starting to annoy me where it is. Let's unlock that. Let's move it over here for now. Maybe it'll be less trouble. Trouble, trouble. Or maybe it won't. Maybe I just need to condense my field of view area. So yeah, these Eddie Web boys, one of the guys is missing arms. I plan to set these up. So this is the base. Um, so this is a firing arc out here, depending on how I set them up. So if I set it up like this, firing arc will be out here. If I do it around the other way, obviously it's out the other way. And then uh, my understanding is that your movement template will slot into the front here. I haven't bought a set of movement templates yet, um, but I do plan to get a set of templates and paint those bad boys up in the, in the following weeks. Um, in addition to this e-web, uh, I've got a couple of speed bikes that are going to need to be painted up in the next couple of weeks as well. Uh, so I'm all ready to learn how to play this game when we come back. Um, get to play back on tables currently at the moment we're still um at a stage of restrictions where we can't play games in store yet without probably getting a butt bit uh, and then we got obviously our beta here that still needs to be hooked up on uh so uh welcome everybody who's or anybody who is in stream um, if it's your first time, welcome. Please drop a, a like or a follow if that's what you're uh, into. Um, so, something I did want to talk about, these Vallejo hobby paints. Obviously, uh, if you know our store, we've been um, varying our range just recently while Games Workshop has had their shop front basically closed for us um, so we weren't able to get very many 
but obviously we weren't able to get any sprays for Citadel, so um, we branched out into the Vallejo range. So um, I've got Wolf Grey and what's this one? This one's English uniform, I think. No, German Field Grey. Yeah. There's some pretty nice colours. Um, the Wolf Grey is what's on the eWeb team. Um, I've had a lot of people ask about the sprays and my opinion. I haven't been able to give an opinion up until now because I hadn't actually taken the opportunity to use them. Um, you might notice that these two spray cans have different lids. Um, the nozzle on the white on the whiter one uh, that's a uh, focused angle um, spray and then the other one is a wide angle spray um, each ah, each can comes with the two different caps in the lid so they just basically come off like that and then just fit the other one on uh, my experience with using these earlier tonight because obviously I this afternoon I, I used it to base the eBay um, using the narrow or focused nozzle I found that it felt like I used less spray to get the models coated um, there definitely wasn't as much of a spray cloud as I used to from the Citadel paints um, I it doesn't seem to rub off at all so um, sometimes you know with the Citadels they'll feel tacky or they'll um, they'll rub off depending on like what you're spraying onto obviously these are a, these are a different plastic to what um, you get from Citadel or at least that's my experience uh, I had to glue these with super glue rather than plastic glue I think they're more of a resin than they are a sprue glue uh, sprue plastic it doesn't really tell you anything in the on the box or on the instructions for assembly um, they're very very brief um, these guys I've actually um, during the week purchased a army painter hand drill um, I have done a bit of pinning before and these guys I decided I wanted to pin them so basically I've just got a I basically took a paper clip paper clip trimmed it up and uh, then drilled into his foot up his ankle and super glued the pin into it basically just means that I can hold it by the pin or I can pin him to a, a separate base to fit my um, my painting knob knob um, pretty much um, there was no other reason for it other than that just a different way to hold on to them essentially uh, the gun itself is not um, pinned um, one of the reasons that I wanted to pin it in fact was uh, I had considered with this next uh, Stormtrooper box to see whether I could get some interchangeability between a couple of the units because um, I'm not particularly fond of the um, snow troopers uh, I just feel like the snow troopers will be out of place on like a tropical battlefield I mean for that matter the um, or a desert battlefield 
Um, so if I can get something of a Stormtrooper to be interchangeable, uh, either by magnetizing the arms or something like that, it would be great, because obviously this little guy, we take him and we slot these arms into him like so. I'm probably going to have to trim them down due to like tr trim down the little knobs due to the fact that they've been base coated and probably due to the fact that the insides the inside cavities there are base coated so um, but yes drills good fun for pinning things good thing for good fun for putting stuff like that together so the plan tonight let's get some colors together here Steel Legion Drab. Can I use this on the under the undercoats of these guys? So on their pants, on their sleeves, ah, below the, the sleeves below their pauldrons. Um, and then like their little wrist cuffs are gonna stay the white colour. Um Gun's going to get some uh, black treatment because uh, that's typically what it is. It's black. Uh, and then we're going to dirty the crap out of it like I have my stormtroopers, basically. So, there's that. And then some assembly required here with these boys' arms. Just get some of this paint back off of it. Go, arm number one. All right, I'm number two. All right, so let's get back on here. Just 
adjust some focus a little bit. So there's a lot of little details on here that I can get onto. So we got like backpacks, we got little uh, belt pouches, got his chest armor. I tend to go and look up some 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 stock footage stuff before I start painting, and then. Uh, basically try and make sure that I had a plan before going ahead with that so I'm just gonna uh, double up my displays here there eventually. There we go. That'll, that'll, that'll do. That was what I thought we were going to do, so. We can find some source material. Something a bit dirtier. Dirty, dirty. Yeah. No, no, this is really doing it for me. I don't just want straight white. But at least I can get an idea of what's going on. That's probably the closest what I want. Yeah. Alright, let's transition back over here. 
So yeah, I reckon put a steel legion drab on the bottom end. Set just to Aquadol camera again. Surely got ten of these body adjustment panels working here. Put a steel legion drab for that undercloak. Where's my puppet? Very white contrast on the rest of it just for its base coat. Gone a half an hour without painting. I'm sure I'm boring the crappery out of everybody. is to paint your lightest shade first so okay better than the other cheap ones that were thrust upon me so let's smash this boy straight away I don't really have a back view of him at all I think actually in this case I'm going to start with the drab because the drab can go underneath and everything else can look filthy around it actually. Get my little wet palette out here, see how she's been going. Some wet paints in there, that's pretty. Still somewhat damp, put that a little bit more. Hydration. I've selected is probably a tad too big for what I want to do, but I'm just going to start in here. Adjust my focus. It's got some armor just on the end of that knee, so I'm going to go all the way to the knee. Oh, 
no new. Painted the poor boy's boot. Not a lot of detail on the inside of that um, cloak, but try my best to get it there. This brush is definitely too big. remove these arms to just get a bit more purchase on that leg My light in a slightly different position this week. Give me a bit of the. a little bit annoying right now. I'm just going to set him aside for a minute. Do some work on his arms. His teensy weensy little arms. Yeah. Hey, focus. How are you tonight, sir? Just switch back to this bigger brush. Actually, that one's too big.
Yeah, I'm great, my friend. I had a bit of a slow weekend. Um, but all in all, I've been quite well. Just uh, doing some new units tonight. We've moved on from the moved on from the our old birdie boy last week, and uh, instead of going back to some Warhammer, we're onto a little bit of Star Wars Legion. Uh, I got this guy in a couple of pieces so that I can just work on him without too much stress. Um, yeah, that's yeah, pretty much it. Moved a, you might notice I've moved some stuff around tonight. Um, just trying to make my workspace a little bit more doable for me. Uh, what's the best way to place you? I can stick you like that to there. Where did your other arm go? Floor? Floor, do you have the other arm? Um... Oh dear, he's armless. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the music is just still coming from that same source as the last time. It's just uh, it's easier to just. Uh, Get music from a source that you know is nice and chill and royalty free than it is to have three quarters of your stream muted like it was a couple of weeks ago. Alright, time for the torch. Unfortunately, our little friend has lost his arm to the floor somewhere. have to paint up his friend instead. His friend in his friend's arms. Honestly, like mere moments ago I removed that arm. Oh well. Moving on to his mate. So these snow troopers, I've, I was just saying earlier, uh, how's the MTG set? Oh, oh, I, so I did a, I think you saw, I did a stream on uh, Thursday last week where I cracked a, cracked a couple of boxes for the store. Uh, there's some pretty crazy stuff in there. Um, I got my own box over the weekend after, you know, majority of the people had picked up their pre-orders. Um, I've got some nice stuff in there, nothing too fantastic. Um, I've had quite a few people um, report back that they opened their box and cried a little bit because they didn't get crazy pulls like we had on stream on Thursday, but um, it, all in all, it's been a very well received set in paper. So, um, you know, it's been... Oh dear, we painted his knee pad. Oh well, it's been delayed by a month and didn't really dull the excitement for that set at all. Most people seem to be fairly cheering that it's out now. Uh, everybody right now is just really poised to... 
get their decks together and get back onto the playing tables, which, you know, very much looking forward to when we're allowed to do that. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, there were quite a few people who were pulling them as that they were the box topper promo that you one of the box topper promos that you could get. Um, yeah, apparently the first print run for the set had them in the box toppers. I've seen quite a few of them going around. There's quite a quite a few people trying to flip those for quite a bit. It's uh, good luck to them. Uh, I mean, I honestly, my personal opinion, the, uh, the the company that makes the game is probably overreacting a little bit with the whole, oh, we can't, we don't uh, want to call it that anymore, but that's their choice. I, uh, I think everybody who's, I, I honestly don't think anybody's really going to, well, I don't think anybody that matters is going to go, oh my god, these guys are profiteering off of a pandemic. Because, like, really, what were the odds that you were going to call a card this name and then have, you know, it's been in development for six months and then just suddenly, oh, look, by the way, there's this virus called Corona and it's just going to, it's killing everybody and, you know, Look this this card we just happen to call Death Corona. You just you're just uh, profiteering off of the suffering other of others. But business is business, I guess. And you're gonna do what you can to protect your business. Oh yeah, the, definitely the, the chances of getting it are pretty crazy. I think there's, um, I think there was something like 15 different box toppers and that was one of them. And then you need to get a first print run ah, box to get that one. In addition to it being a 1 in 15 chance from that print run. So yeah. That guy's knee's going to need a touch up.
Pardon me. Are you a magic player there, Focus? Is magic something that interests you? Have you bought into the new Ikoria cards? Nice, yeah, slivers. Slivers are fan bloody tastic. Yes. Been running slivers since or, you know, on and off running slivers since like Tempest when they first came out. Fantastic mechanic, you know. Uh, an entire tribe that is just basically lords. <laughs> Shark Typhoon is an absolute nutbag of a card. I, uh, one of the guys on our uh, Discord server um, has been playing around with that. <clears throat> um, basically, turning it into a. Uh, Big ol' pile of sharks, as you say, it is a fantastic concept. Playing it with like uh, your uh, ramp and your counter magic and stuff. I really wish I knew what I did with that guy's arm. It's quite frustrating. It's probably hiding behind one of the feet of the table, but oh well. I'll come across it later. Alrighty.
gonna try a little bit of fancy stuff. I'm gonna hit these boys with some apothecary white, which is a bit of a bit of a grayish white contrast, and then thin down some of this agro dunes, I reckon, and see if we can wet blend from the bottom up. Wet blending, not something I've ever tried before, but I watched our uh, Lord and Saviour Duncan doing it the other day. And I reckon it's worth a play. Who cares if it gets stuffed up because we're just going to play with these guys eventually anyway, so... Now, and the key to wet blending is to keep, get all our stuff ready beforehand. So we put, we place our uh, apothecary white on first, and my plan is that this dunes. We're going to start at the bottom, just the very bottom here, and then we're going to try and make it look like the bottom of his cloak is filthy dirty. We'll probably spread a bit around his feet as well. Because, you know, permafrost isn't perfectly white. There's dirt in permafrost, you know. That stuff can get... <clears throat> can still make your clothing dirty regardless of how... Uh, let's, let's, let's zoom out here or focus out. So you can see what I'm doing on the palette. Not if I'm out of control. Oh, that's so I'm gonna dump a little bit of this dunes into here. So this is a very dirty orangey, I guess sort of, or yellowy brown. I'm gonna get that in there. Then I'm going to get some of this contrast medium to thin her down a bit. Add a bit more body to... Not body. Uh, make it go a bit further, I guess. Just going to thin it down. So yeah, I'm hoping that that will make it thin enough so that now I can get my apothecary white contrast and we're just going to slot this over the the figure like this and hopefully that contrast I'm just going to pull it down from the top to the bottom sort of thing we get all of our little buttons and knobs and lights on the back of his backpack later. Just gonna draw it from the top down. Should probably have his arms on for this bit. Ah, oh, there's his other freaking arm. You little Sasquatch. That's all right. Pouches, hit his up, hit his pouches. All right, so there we go. There's. Oh, I forgot to re redo his knees, but that's all right. All right, clean our brush, dry our brush. Now yeah, for the fun bit, I'm going to attempt to start with some of this stuff low on him, and then get them to blend in the middle. Yeah, I've gone a bit low with some of the apothecary. 
scary, but that's all right. Draw some of it up and draw some of it down. So it's dirtier near the bottom, hopefully lighter near the top. Keep wanting to touch that head. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You can definitely come in and spectate. Nobody's... Nobody's, uh... That concerned with, you know... Um... Nobody gets upset about people just coming in to watch. It's one of the great things about the game, is that it has that ability to just be spectated if that's what you want to do. Just, uh... Just gotta be mindful of you know, you know, minding your P's and Q's, you know, don't jump in on somebody else's, uh, somebody else's game and be giving their opponents or them advice, it's just not good etiquette, you know. I'm liking the way that that guy came out, he's like, got a certain level of filth to him that I'm trying to go with on these guys. I'm just going to see if I can put him down on this blue tack without touching him too much and messing up everything. Don't you fall over. Don't you fall over. Alright, his other arm. Let's go back to that. The other, other arm. Yeah, I, I'm i quite happy with how that came out. I like, as you know by now, I love to just experiment with little silly things like that. See how they work. Especially like, it's one of those till day I learned moments or today I put into practice this thing that our Lord and Saviour Duncan showed me on a 
YouTube video the other day. Good old Lord and Saviour, Duncan. I am by no means a pro for painting, but boy oh boy, can I copy some of the best. <laughs> I'm really digging this music tonight, as uh, as you mentioned earlier, Focus. Yeah, there's a little bit of, uh, it, it is spiced up a little bit. I think they've also added in a bit of, a bit more science fiction-y sound and stuff as well, which is cool. Cool, 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 cool. Teensy weensy little glovey hand. Alright, now on to the other bad boy. Give his cloak a bit of a painting as well. I'm going to use a smaller brush this time. I got a bit out of control on that last pass. Was already dried onto him. So 
this guy's crouching down. This is the guy with the arms, so let's just quietly fit these onto him so he can get the treatment that the other guy's got. The other guy's arms are on the gun. The gun. Alright, so this guy sits. This guy sits playing with this machine. This power box that powers the gun. Alright. Again, this is Apothecary White, which is more of a, a very light grey contrast paint. It's got a white pigment and a, a grey medium to it, really. Gonna have to come back and hit his blasters with some some black or some darker grey.
we'll end up painting some mud onto the bottom of that boot I reckon and some mud around the base of this boot I don't know how I'm going to do a, like a permafrost base for this but that's kind of what I feel like I want to do for it all right I need another blob of blue tack stand these guys next to each other and then we'll have a bit of a go at the cannon. Derp, 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 cannon. All right. So first off, I got this box. I'm thinking with a good old boxy box here. Where are you? hit this with a slightly darker grey guy. Be happy to find it. Oh my goodness. There it is. I'm gonna hit it with some basilicum grey contrast. So the it'll be a greyish, a dark greyish box I'm hoping, with uh, all the recesses pretty darkly coloured. Um and then we'll hit this this uh, power cable, I reckon, with some simpler black. Templar black. Also, paint the gun and the gun stand with the Templar black as well, I reckon. Actually, i got to get onto this. this. These gloves with some drab first as well. But yes. Pulls away. Sorry. Into the jungle all this. Okay. I'm look, I'm not I'm not a super fan of the um the snow troopers, to be honest. Um I've got this other box here that I was showing off a little bit earlier that we're gonna crack out and build. And I'm actually quite tempted because these guys' arms come as a separate package. I'm actually quite tempted to see whether I can just magnetize the arms that are on this boy that we were doing just before and magnetize this guy and magnetize that guy so that I can have them interchangeable um, and then the same with the standing guy finding one of these guys that I can have him interchanged with so I can have some standard stormtroopers um, um, man this gun instead of the snow troopers because you know, not everything's going to be in the jungle, not everything's going to be in a, on a snow planet. And I, I much prefer the bog standard grunt stormtroopers to the other ones when it comes to this, especially with the other the other guys that I've already painted. Um, that being said, though, um, I kind of do need to have a play around with um, some different types of bases. I mean, I've done a lot of desert style basing so uh all right the silicon gray the silicon gray Let's see what we can do with this power box so after after i've contrasted it i'm obviously going to hit the top of that with some more details so I'll, you know add some colors in and stuff like that as we go along but to start with Load up a bunch of this in this little palette. And then let's get it get it painted. So this is sort of a, a stony kind of grey wash with a dark, or oh, medium with a dark pigment to it. Okay. 
Come on, get it into the brush. There we go. Slop it on there. Yeah, I am definitely going to hit up some vehicles. I want to get a, I want to get one of the ATSTs and uh, probably the that they've got a tank that's like a um, troop carrier style thing as well that I want to get. Um, there's a Dubac Rider that one's going to be interesting to paint. Um, I haven't done a scaled type animal before, a bit like I hadn't done a feathered animal until we did old birdie boy the last couple of weeks all right so that's the chest done now we'll get the power cable running out of it done. Actually, we'll put that on hold for a minute while we do the black on the gun. Oh. Gunny gun gun. Yeah, this is true. Um, I think there's a lot more um, ability to catch some of the uh, with the dry brushing a lot a lot more detail to to catch on with that with the old scales and feather that rather than the feathers
Um, so to begin with, I'm giving it a bit of a metallic black look with this uh, contrast. Um, we'll figure out the rest later. No, um, I had a thought to sponge a bit of brown over the top of it to m make it get a bit of to give it a bit of weathering afterwards so we'll see how this comes out first just getting this uh, sort of base of the contrast black onto it and then we'll see where we move from there yeah Trying to get all the <sighs> Yep. Yep, yep, yep. We hit something with contrast one week. We hit something with traditional painting the next. And then on the third week we just go, hey man, how about we just do all the crap all together? But you know, this is this is the thing, like you sit down during the week you watch a whole bunch of YouTube videos and then you go, you know what? I'm going to give that a go. Whether it's on stream or not, doesn't matter. Just going to have a bit of fun. That's what this is all about. So that gun's looking pretty sick. I love this uh, contrast black. Um... Speaking of the contrast black, we're now going to try and get it on to the pipework of this. I'm just going to rip him off of there. Although, like I could do it in a different color. I could do it like a brown or something, but no. So this will get the black treatment, but then afterwards I'm thinking I'll hit it with a bit of lead belcher, which is a dark metallic, to make it look more like a metallic coiled power cable. The, um, the Templar black is a really good base for dry brushing metallics because if you can successfully thin it down by 
pulling it from one end to the other it gets more grayish or dark grayish and more so ends up giving your recesses a dark grey a very dark grey finish sorry keep going off camera That's looking pretty good. Oh. Bit of a mixture here in my room tonight. It's a bit warm, but it's a bit cool. Make the top of my head's hot, but my body's a bit cooled down. It's just painful getting a little alright don't oh throw it away that can wait alright so can come back I'm gonna do a google search for my troopers and see if I can get a 360 on these I just want to back for you guys, I back for you, give me your back for you. Ew. Snow Trooper Mandalorian, I don't like it. Stop crossing things up. Aha! Mm. <coughs> Sorry about that. Found a snow trooper backpack, which is what I wanted. So, so, how are these going for dry? They seem pretty dry. All right. So, let me get back on the stream page, and let me get my little brush here, and let's. Crank up the focus a little bit on this boy. Alright, we'll come back to our stock photo. So we're looking at painting this little nodule here, these two little ones red. This one is going to be black. The outside of this is going to be a darker grey. This little bit up here is going to be a darker grey. 
This button down here is going to be a dark, the darker grey as well. That's going to be a red light. And down here is going to be a dark grey. So. how precisely we can make this, eh? Pretty good. Yeah. Yep. All right. Just a little bit of continuity there, it got in between them. That's okay. So that was, sorry, that was Flesh Terror's Contrast, because it pops a little bit better than the, just the normal old bread. I can highlight it. It's really tiny, but I can give it a tiny bit of a highlight a bit later and hit those greys with some Mechanicus. Oh, you need to shake. Oh, he's clumpy AF. Let's see if we can water it down a bit on the wet palette. All right, so this is for this little panel at the top here. Unfortunately, I wasn't a very smart man and I left this brush in the cup and as you can see, it's curled the end of it a bit. Just going to try and work around that. Now, some people might be saying, hey, was that really enough time to let all these paint, paint colours that you've been painting dry? I can tell you for a fact that most of it's a little bit tacky. So no, maybe I didn't wait long enough after it 
was painted to paint the next bit, but that's my choice. Yeah, because it just sits against the bottom of the cup, and the the bottom of the cup's got little curls on it, uh, little ridges on it in the cup that I've got, and so if you leave it there too long, resting against its tip, it does deform it slightly. these tiny little details on his backpack. This is probably the most high detail thing that I've done in a while. Just because I want to. So there are ways to treat your brush to uncurl, you know, to fix the things that I have done to my brush, but, um, you know, treating them with soaps and stuff like that. But, you know, you can also just buy cheap synthetic brushes like what I've done and then you don't get too worried don't you're not too worried about it um, also as I've said on many occasions I'm not a professional painter by any stretch of the word so I'm not that bothered I can persevere persevere That does need cleaning. Get a chunk of something on the end. Heroic music. Raw. Not appropriate, mate. I'm happy for you, but 
Not here, thanks. So, back of his grey is done as well. He's got one more to do. Yeah, I have no idea who that guy was, focus. wasn't appropriate to the stream so uh, the last thing that we want to do on here is there's just a little black button as well so just our the bad and black this is a solid black color Get a bit of that on the palette and give it a little touch of a thin down. Just this tiny little bit here. can almost barely make out the difference between the grey and the black, but that's cool. How's this going with its drying? I can still see some little pools of wetness in there so we'll give it a little bit more time um. most of this guy is quite good now so I'm just gonna hit him up with a little bit of black in the eye sockets there if I can as well. Ah, uh, the... Oh, it's not even going to go there. Ten... Yeah, 10 seconds. Yeah, that's it. Um, so that, that was just the camera. Um, the camera adjusted for white tone as far as I can tell. So the, the black actually 
dries like a a very dark bluey black. almost dark blue steel black I don't know if that makes any sense to you the way that I've said it but yeah the reason why I keep coming back to this is because I want to try and do the arms with the uh, apothecary white the, the pauldrons and the gloves so done now just so they're not so garishly white and they should get a bit of definition from this as well Bring it a bit closer. A bit closer, can you get closer? So that's hopefully looking more bluey black to you so like this sort of bit around here looks almost steel blue and then this stuff should all look more black and there's a tiny bit of white there that we need to attack rah kill the white We did it. The good thing is it's not too difficult to just touch up the little bits that you find later with the contrast that have been missed. Just give them a quick lick with your brush. never surprises me how much white you can actually end up finding on the second pass guys have got some nice brown trousers on them that I'm going to now attack with some shade. I'm going to hit them up with some Nuln oil, which is a industrial-ish looking shade. It comes through very grey. So that'll be their trousers, that'll be their gloves and such. Because these boys are working with some real dirty equipment. Hey, Tuvac, how you doing, mate? Thanks for dropping by.
And this wash is just going to bring out the definition in a lot of his gear as well. It's going to turn that turn that dirty brown into a very industrially style kind of dirtiness rather than a rather than just color. It's a snow trooper too back. Snow trooper. So I've actually I do they look a bit like this with their e-web cannon. But I just grabbed some uh, stock photography photography style stuff off the interwebs and have done my own thing as I do. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Oops. I went outside the line. We almost made a fatal error. We almost tipped the null oil all over the table. Null oil, also known as liquid gold, is not something you want to tip all over the table. I'm just using the null oil. Yes, no, it's not my it's not my PC too back, unfortunately. It's the internet connection that I use. Because unfortunately at home I do not have the fantastic uh, surfaces of uh, of of Casnet. Unfortunately, I'm on Superloop here with the WiMAX, so we do the best that we can. with what we have. Um, I do... <laughs> I do upload the videos of my streams to the YouTubies afterwards, in case... and they, they are not, uh, thankfully, affected by the lag, because I, I record it separately. And they are generally lag free
guys nice and dirty. <sighs> now I've gone and failed by... Doesn't matter where I'm touching this guy, when I put him into the blue tack, he's gonna get me. I should have left him in blue tack to begin with. Eh. Alright. As I said before, some of these, some of these spots you'll see that I've gone and had a boo boo. But and you might ask why I haven't cleaned it up. But the truth of the matter is, they're going to be concealed behind other things. So I'm not super concerned about them. And then you might say, yeah, but then why are you also shading those areas? And I'm like, well, just Shut up, don't ask questions. Uh, no, these guys, because they're going to be... Um, the question was, do these guys have the same size bases as the other guys that I did? They do not because they are because they're the heavy weapon emplacement. They actually have themselves a rather hefty base to go with them. Let me just get the bottom of this uh, dude done here. That way, it's all sort of tied in. A bit more here. They end up on a base altogether that is that size. So you have the gun here, sort of thing. You have the box over here that hooks into it. This guy sits back behind the box. This guy sits back behind those arms. There are... They, um... Are a bit more cumbersome to move around the battlefield as well because they can't they can't move and shoot in the same turn. They end up uh, you end up having to move them and then set them or move them and move them. And I believe on your following turn they can fire from the the place that they've moved to. Very hard working these e-web boys. A lot of moving around.
happy with how these boys are. They're very, <clears throat> they're starting to look quite grotty. Like hard working, hard working fellas they are. That's exactly how I wanted them to look. Nice and grotty. I've obviously, you know, recently rewatched The Mandalorian for the fourth time, the entire series, so I have this liking of that whole post empire collapse sort of. Stormtroopers don't know what to do, so they just attach themselves to whoever looks like they're in power and become more like a mercenary band than a like, like an irregular army rather than a, a full-on army, so... They need to fight and clean us, though. Well, this is the thing, like, I didn't, I don't even really want these to be, oof, I forgot to change my focus. I don't even want these to really be snow, didn't want them to be snow fighters in the first place. And as I was explaining earlier, not all snow is pure white snow, like permafrost. Permafrost is very, it's just frozen dirt, basically, so... These boys still got, you know, a bit of class to them, just not as much as they had originally. And, you know, white in any sort of painting is not necessarily clean white, so I might actually hit the bottom of that boot with um, <clears throat> some sort of a brown or a black maybe this dryad bark hmm. only the yellowest snow will do yep sure <laughs> that's great Not that you're going to see the underside of his boot, but 
that guy is what I would term pretty much done. I'll hit his blaster with some black in a minute. But as far as done goes, he's like 90% it. Again, I reiterate, like, you might ask, hey, is that really dried on that? I'm just going to say that my house is very, very dry. And I will tell you now that that wash that I did on this before is definitely not sticking to my fingers at all now. This is one of the reasons why I ended up getting the wet palette was because all my paints on my dry out my normal palette were drying up extremely quickly. Which was super frustrating. At the moment, the only thing that's wet on here is these things here that I've used today this is the the drab that I used on their pants earlier <clears throat> this is I think Carrick stone from the other day that we were using on old birdie boy from a couple of weeks ago <clears throat> the palette got a bit dry during the week this metallic here and this orange here are quite dry looking like the I could probably add some medium to it and it'd be all right but I think they're not for not long for this world so as you can see that's come out looking pretty cool so now I'm gonna just do a quick that's good looks like I spent some time standing around yeah yeah that's it man that's that's the plan um I've got some let's let's cover this up i'm gonna do oh i was gonna do a bit of a search but i'm actually at the end of my time for tonight so to review so this little doodad goes up into here they can you can't see because i'm not focused in fact let's do the opposite Let's put our camera closer. Okay. So this little doodad goes up into the bottom of the gun there. I've got a little pin on the bottom of it so I can pin it eventually. So that goes into there. Arms go onto this boy like this. My hand is big and fat and in the way. And then when this this uh, energy thing is in place. This little boy stands next to it. <clears throat> this is going to get some more coloring on top because this is obviously the power source for the uh, for the weapon. So I'm just going to give it a those bits on top I'll see if I can find a reference picture and then I'm going to give them some color probably the same for the little dots on the front and the sides and stuff just to pretty it up a bit just like we did on the I did on the back of this guy with his little lights and his little buttons and stuff I'll probably re-hit them now that I've shaded them as well just to brighten them back up a little bit um, 
So the things that I didn't get around to tonight, uh, I was going to assemble these guys, but the e-web took a little bit longer than I want, than, well, a little bit longer than I was expecting, but then again, you know, we did a bird over two sessions. I've also got this upgrade kit, which gives me a couple of other units to add into the next group. Um, just shuffle these guys around so I can give you... You weren't here for the beginning of the stream, so you didn't see the other guys that I had previously been working on. Let's get this in like that. Just focus a little bit. There we go. So um, my blue squad, the light is rubbish because it's coming from the wrong angle. This is my blue squad. So you've just got eh, you got four of these normal grunts, and then you got a couple of special weapons guys, and then the commander here in the middle though. So that's obviously the blue team. They're all nice and dirty like like i said i've been watching the old re-watching the uh, the mandalorian so that goes a long way towards the decision for the design that i did on them and then even though there's not much difference uh, the green squad Again, you got your four grunts, a couple of heavy weapons dudes, and your commander. So that's that's my two squads so far. Then we've got the E-Web, which I'm obviously working on. Uh, and then uh, that extra upgrade kit box, which has got a couple of extra a couple of different um specialty units which i haven't been into yet um this is a, not a game that i have played yet it's something that i'm hoping to get into once we um go back to some normal stuff in life um we do yeah no problem focus thank you very much for tuning in like you have been every week it's really nice to have somebody to chat to during the night. Uh, we will catch you next week or another day on another stream, hopefully. Um, this this box this box has got some upgrades. I don't know what's in it yet. I'm pretty excited to open that up. I'm going to save that for next week. Um, but in the meantime, the unit expansion which is just another squad I'm going to smash out probably during the week. Um, I've also got a couple of speeder bikes from the old indoor speeder bikes to um, to do as well. Oh no, the little the little ventral thingy fins broken off. No problem, mate. Take care. Uh, i got another 10 minutes left of this stream. Have a good night. I will talk to you again soon. Um, but yeah, basically... Basically, that is me done for the night. Those are the things that I've done uh, during the week. Those two units. And then, obviously, this is the E-Web. I eventually want to get onto um, an ATST, some Duvacs. Uh, then I want to grab a whole bunch of the scenery. So for this game, we've got like your indoor bunker. Um, we've got a downed ATST. Um, we've got a um, an escape pod that comes with uh, C3PO and R2D2. Uh, there's some other some other scenery upgrade packs, but I can't think of what they are off the top of my head. Oh, there's some object there's an objectives pack which has like some some uh, bombs and stuff like that that you've got to gain or maintain control of. 
Um, there's some barricades that I want to get a hold of as well. Um, yes, there's a lot of things that I want to do for Legion. Um, uh, I've done quite a bit of Age of Sigma stuff recently to uh, get myself ready for when we go come back on tables for my Warcry Warbands. I think I've got four Warbands and two extra packs of cards for when we get um, our Games Workshop orders going again because um, they, for lack of a better word, stuffed up this week and uh, lost our order. Um, we're looking to see whether we can get it expressed out because we've been six to eight weeks without new Games Workshop um, restocks, which has been pretty ru rubbish, but yeah. Um, it's just not fun to see everybody else getting their restocks and um, being told that you're going to have to wait another week or so. Um, Alright, so as far as streams go, um, tomorrow night uh, I'll be streaming from um, 7.30 to 8.30 with my youngins uh, playing some Realm Royale, which is a first person shooter. Um, it's a bit of a Fortnite light, as I like to call it. Um, and then I'll probably be on um, from about 9.30 till late, or 9.30 till however long Saint is streaming for, and we'll be co-streaming. Um, if if Saint is happy for me to be in his stream again, as he has been in the past. So we've been having some pretty good fun with the old Realm Royale. Um, missed the days of like old Unreal Tournament and stuff like that, which we used to smash out 10 to 15 years ago with, it's probably 15 to 20 years ago, in fact, with um, my other friends. Um, if there's anything that you guys would like to see on stream, if there's anything that painting wise that interests you that you'd like to see me mess around with um, give us a shout give us a a message through either the discord or the, the Facebook I'm more than happy to spend my money on um, trying something out and save you the the pain of uh, it not working out for you um, if you, if you uh, enjoy what you've witnessed tonight, um, please do jump onto the, the YouTube in the next couple of days and throw a, a like a uh, on this video, because this video will go up on our uh, page, uh, on our YouTube page. I like the subscribe, comment if you must, tell me how bad I am. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this evening. Just a just a recap. Uh, I showed off some Vallejo base sprays and had a little chat about that. Uh, showed off my army painter hand drill that I bought as well during the week. It did showed the pinning that I've been doing because I'm like it's not so much important with these ones but I mean these guys have only got one base between them so it's easier to put a pin in something and paint than it is to do any do it to stick them all down and then try and paint them um, went through the expansions that I've been buying for Legion um, if there's any new games uh, there's there's actually a uh, an expansion to Infinity that just released, a new core set, um, which I, off the top of my head I can't remember what it was called, that we just recently got in. I think it might be called Code 1, in fact. Um, I might have a look at um, if I can get another core set of that in, and we might build and paint that in a, in a future episode. Um, but for now, I'm going to let you all go time for me to go to bed it's time for you to go to bed probably unless you're working or normally up late um yeah uh
take care and enjoy yourselves and we will, I will catch you on the other side. Bye bye.